In this video, we're going to introduce a set of first player shooter components. These are everything you need to build and publish and host a multiplayer shooting game using SignSpace. In the last two videos, we looked at how to upload scenes and inventory items. Now we're going to get to the really exciting stuff, how easy it is to build and publish a fully customizable multiplayer experience using the SignSpace tools. The first-person shooter components have been built using the SignSpace scripting system. This is a sandboxed version of Lua designed to prevent malicious actors from uploading dangerous scripts to the public servers. Nobody wants to have their hard disk erased by viewing the wrong content. The API is built to be as close as possible to the Unity scripting API, so it should not be too hard for anyone familiar with Unity to pick up and build their own components and scripts. You can use these ones without needing any scripting at all. They're all pre-made but completely configurable. If you want to build your own standalone project using SignSpace, with your own users and your own viewers separate from our public servers, then you can also use our c -sharp plugin system and sideload c -sharp scripts with your custom viewer. But please note that even on a white label project like that, we can't support c -sharp in WebGL or iOS where we're unable to inject c -sharp scripts into the runtime. You can find links to the scripting API on our wiki. The first person components we're going to look at today are all built in Lua so they run on our public servers and they're open source. They were created by Torsten at Dot Enterprise, who's been building all sorts of amazing projects on SignSpace during the beta, and we're hugely grateful to him and to Curtis, who've done an enormous amount of work putting all of this together. You can take these open source components and expand them into your own project, or you can collaborate with others on the public server building weapons and NPCs and maps and extensions. The core components are easiest to review if you grab the objects in the Furniture folder in the FPS Demo folder in the Editor Pack. These are all pre-configured as finished items, and you can just swap out your art, configure them and upload them, or you can add to the scripts however you want to. Feel free to reach out to our developers in Discord if you want to talk about how to build something. I'm going to drag each into my scene here. The Safe Zone Lobby. This is really a game lobby inside the playable map. It's where the players arrive and it's where they respawn when they die. You can add leaderboards here. You can't get hit in the safe zone by another player. You can't shoot in the safe zone. When you walk out of the safe zone, you enter the game. This is an NPC spawner. The NPC spawners spawn enemies that will attack players. At the moment, these are simple melee attackers. You can script your own more sophisticated NPCs if you want to. We'll be adding ranged NPCs shortly. It's worth noting that our scripting makes it possible for you to create public variables. These are designed to mimic the Unity Inspector variables. It means that you can create components that are shareable with other Unity developers using our sandboxed scripting. It also means you can deliver customization and configuration options to end users through the room edit system. So on this NPC spawner, I, as the player in world, place it in the scene. And now, as I'm laying out my custom map, I can even drill down to configure how many enemies it spawns per minute, what their range is, how fast they move, and so on. It's worth noting that the art on the copies in the editor pack here is very basic because it's stuff that we can distribute royalty-free through the editor pack. But it's easy to take these components and add your own unique art. This is a player spawn point. Player spawn points can be dotted around the region. When players walk out of the safe zone, they're automatically sent to a random spawn point. We're about to add support for teams here, but at the moment this is a simple all-against-all framework. The weapons are raycasting guns. 
The gun has a muzzle flash and an impact event. Users can shoot each other and they can shoot enemy NPCs. You can have up to eight guns in inventory at once. The weapon giver is an object in the scene that users walk over to pick up a particular gun type. The health stations give health when you walk up to them and have a configurable cooldown rate. The ammo stations give ammo when you walk over them. Ammo is tied to gun type. This is a simple King of the Hill zone. It defines the actual gameplay in the region. In this case, it's all against all, with individual players getting points for defending the zone. Traps can be anything that damages the player. It might be a toxic swamp or a swarm of drones. This is a laser cannon, with the trap triggered via a long, thin box collider. The logging switch is a developer tool that you can also place as a furniture item in the scene and it will allow you to log while testing. These are the absolute basics. The simplest thing to do with these would be to set them up in your scene in Unity and upload the scene as you saw us do in the tutorials earlier. You can then log in with your friends and play. But we're going to do things differently. We're going to set them each up as a separate inventory item so that players can build and customise their own maps in world. We'll also look at some of the other science-based components that complement all of this, like the quest system and the vehicle systems. In the next video, we're going to look first at the safe zone, which contains the combat meter, the bullet pool manager and the player HUD, all of which you can easily configure for your own projects.